Welcome back to daytime. We're talking, as I was saying, about organ donation. Do you know someone who might need an organ or has possibly donated uh, when maybe an accident unforeseen happened? Well, the man who we're about to talk to has been on our show many times, and you might know him through zoo tours, but Chris Bolesky is actually the recipient, not once, but twice, maybe even three times. We're going to find out uh, on some organs that makes him the reason he's a miracle and why he's here today so thank you so much for being here a miracle. Oh, I like that. I'm oh, gonna use that <laughs> <laughs> so Chris we've talked to you many many times and you're always yes. here bringing all your wonderful little reptiles but yep. today you're here to talk a little bit about organ donation yes uh, in Canada uh, it's organ donation awareness week um, and it's just it basically letting people know that there's so many things that um, we need to be aware of mm -hmm. and organ donation is one of the big ones when somebody passes on they have no use for their organs anymore right. I was fortunate enough I needed a kidney and a pancreas I was on dialysis mm -hmm. for two years and I was a diabetic for 33 years now two donations and I'm not a diabetic anymore so which is big news to a lot of people they didn't know huge. that was an option but just talking about, about this for a moment so so you you had diabetes for 33 years and then you your kidney is not working, which is a side effect of diabetes. Yes, long term diabetic problem. Yes. So you needed to get a uh, you're on dialysis. You needed to get a transplant. Yep. So you're on a list, obviously. Yes, it's a it's a tricky list. You have to be sick enough to get onto the list. You have to be sick enough to get to the top of the list, and then you have to be healthy enough when they call you. You get a pager. It's 2010, 2012. Who wears a pager? Probably somebody who's getting a transplant. They're waiting right. for somebody, unfortunately, to pass away. Usually on long weekends, that's when it tends to happen. And um, they call, and you have to be sick enough to get there, but not too sick to get the transplant because you have to be healthy enough to get it. Wow. So really, it's all about timing, complete timing. Com and circumstances. Yeah. It's all, some of them you can control, some of them you can't. Right. It's yeah, it's tricky. So you had your your kidney, and and that was uh, that was a good match. You, you were good to go. Okay. Uh, actually, I got a kidney pancreas the first time in 2010, and they were both a good match. Right. And the pancreas failed afterwards because it's a much trickier transplant. The kidney they've been doing it for almost 30 years. Right. Um, it's pretty common. And most hospitals can do a transplant for a kidney. Probably within two hours, you could do a transplant for a kidney. It's right. it's that simple now. For a pancreas, there's so many more blood vessels for large and small um, attachments, and there was a blood clot after four days. So right before I was about to go home, because the recovery time was about six days in the hospital. Wow. It failed, so they had to go back in and take it out. So then two years later, I got another pancreas. So they went in, took it out, and then you're you're back sick, even though you just went in to get a. I was a... back to being a diabetic. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay. But no dialysis. Okay. So I didn't count it as being a non-diabetic because mm -hmm. I don't really count it until you're out of the hospital and you don't have to take shots. Right. I have a theory. When you're in a gown and your butt is hanging out, it's you're not clear. Yeah. Once you're out of the hospital, if your butt's still hanging out, then fine. You can still count <laughs> it. But uh, once you're at home, then you can say you're not a diabetic. Right. And I didn't get that until the second transplant. Okay. So, so then two how, donors it took. How many years after did you get another pancreas? Almost two, two. years. Yeah, All right. almost two years. So now you're you're good to go. Now you're now I'm two years after. I just got my two year post transplant checkup. Mm -hmm. They said I'm the healthiest I've been in 20 years. One thing that you told me that I had no idea, uh, and I mean this might seem silly, but I thought that when they took a kidney, put a kidney in, like that's how it went. They sort took your kidney, like but that's not how it goes. Nope. I have three kidneys and two pancreas right now, so I'm like two and a half men. Two and a half men, unbelievable. Yeah, well, now it explains so much, <laughs> more, so much more about you. Now I understand you yeah. so much better. Well, and a lot of people didn't even know I was sick. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, lots of people are diabetics. It's incredible how many diabetics there are. When I was a kid in northern Alberta, I was the only one in the town. So nobody even knew about it in the school. Um, now everybody knows a diabetic. Yeah. So this isn't an option for them unless they're really sick and they've had kidney failure and things like that. So a lot of times people didn't even know I was sick. Mm -hmm. People who knew me well did. Yeah. But you do dialysis at night or you can go to Aurelia. We have a very good clinic here in Barrie mm -hmm. as well. And they walk me through it. So we have a picture of your before and after that we can uh, take a look at so that people can see at home. I believe we're looking at your uh, before, obviously, in, in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right after the transplant. That's right after the transplant. And yeah. there you are. The, and that one is 
after the kidney, but I'm still a diabetic, you can sort of see the, the pump on the side, that's for okay. taking the diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, the insulin. So that's the almost finished. This is now the finished oh. bottle there. So cut wow. from there to there, wow. they go in. You got the kidney there, and the pancreas over there. Yeah. So there's all sorts of extra organs in there. Unbelievable. It's uh, Unbelievable. it's fascinating. I learned fascinating, a lot about sure. what they have to do to get in there, mm -hmm. change it, but they leave all the parts in there. And and one point we were talking about in the the green room is actually Jesse brought it up that that what, like I'm what happens after uh, to yourself? You felt healthier. You felt maybe other things changed about you. You do. Um, with diabetes, you tend to be sick for a long time, and you just come to accept that as just regular everyday mm -hmm. life. After 33 years, uh, highs and lows with sugar, you end up with uh, bad vision. Um, if you cut yourself on your feet and your hands, you don't heal as yeah. quickly, and then dialysis, things like that. So you just tend to kind of accept it because it's not like a car accident where one day everything is fine and then the next day it's not. Yeah. This is, you just come to terms with it. After this, you kind of, you can eat anything you want. I, I mean, for 33 years I didn't eat foods because it would cause problems. Yeah. yeah. So now I can eat anything I want. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, now I still don't eat a lot of food, but I, I can. And that takes a lot of weight off of somebody's mind. You can make plans for a week down the road, a month down the road, a year down the road. Yeah. I never did that. I always said from the time I was a kid, because I was sick when I was 10, 25, rich or dead. Mm -hmm. I happened to be fairly well off at 25, but I wasn't dead, and then I had another 20 years to go, yeah. so I didn't plan it out. Now I can make plans for the future. The future. Wow. Yeah. So if someone is uh, thinking about donating, or, or what would you say to someone who is having that thought in the back of their mind? Register. Uh, it, it takes less than two minutes. Actually, I did it again yesterday um, just to go through and check it out. It took me uh, 47 seconds mm -hmm. to get everything. Be a donor.ca. Because the card isn't necessarily that foolproof. No. Uh, if you don't discuss it with your family and your friends and your loved ones, mm -hmm. they can always disagree or when it comes time, because they're in shock as yeah. well. If it's a car accident, it tends to be long weekends. It tends to be younger, healthy males, although anybody can donate. And only 25%, less than 25% of the people that are eligible to donate in Ontario yeah. actually are registered. Wow. Well, there you go. Make sure you go to the website. Make sure you yeah. register yourself if you want to make sure that your organs, because you could be saving eight lives. Eight lives. And with skin and whatnot, it's skin, eyes, organs, everything. Everything is usable. It's Excellent. the ultimate recycling program. Thank you so much, Chris.